Music, as an art form, is essentially playful. We say you play the piano. You don't work the piano. Why? Music differs from, say, travel. When you travel, you are trying to get somewhere. And of course, we, because being a very compulsive and purposive culture, are busy getting everywhere faster and faster and faster till we eliminate the distance between places. I mean, with the modern jet travel, you can arrive almost instantaneously. <clears throat> What happens as a result of that is that the two ends of your journey become the same place. So you eliminate the distance and you eliminate the journey. Because the fun of the journey is to travel, not to obliterate travel. So then, in music, though, one doesn't make the end of a composition the point of the, comp of the composition. If that were so, the best conductors would be those who played fastest. <laughs> And there would be composers who wrote only finales. <laughs> People go to a concert just to hear one crashing chord, because that's the end. <laughs> Same way in dancing. You don't aim at a particular spot in the room. That's where you should arrive. The whole point of the dancing is the dance. And look at the people who live to retire and put those savings away. And then when they're 65, they don't have any energy left. They're more or less impotent. And uh, they go and rot in an old people's senior citizens community. <laughs> because we've simply cheated ourselves the whole way down the line. We thought of life by analogy with a journey, with a pilgrimage, which had a serious purpose at the end, and the thing was to get to that end, success or whatever it is, or maybe heaven after you're dead. But we missed the point the whole way along. It was a musical thing, and you were supposed to sing or to dance while the music was being played. But you had to do that. You didn't let it happen. And so, for this, in this way, the human being sometimes becomes an organism for self-frustration. Let's take uh, Kozhebsky called man a time binder. That means that he's the animal peculiarly aware of the time sequence. And as a result of this, is able to do some very remarkable things. He can predict. He studies what's happened in the past, and he says the chances are so-and-so of that happening again. So he predicts. Well, this is very useful to be able to predict, because that has survival value. But at the same time, it creates anxiety. You pay for this increased survival ability involved in prediction, by knowing that in the end you won't succeed. They're all going to fall apart by one way or another. It might happen tomorrow, it might happen 50 years from now, but it all comes apart in the end. And people get worried about that, they get anxious. So what they gained on the roundabout, they lost on the swings. So then, if you see, on the other hand, that existence, this is, as I said, my basic metaphysical assumption, which I won't conceal from you, that existence is musical in nature. That is to say that it is not serious. It is a play of all kinds of patterns. We can look upon different creatures as we look at different games, as we look at chess, checkers, backgammon, tennis, there's the tree game, the beetle game, the grass game, or you can look at them as you look at different styles of music, mazurkas, waltzes. Uh, sonata, etc., etc., all down the line. There are all these different things doing their stuff. And we're doing that. Now, existence, you see, is something that is spontaneous. The Chinese word for nature, zhiran, uh, means that which happens of itself. Your hair grows by itself. Your heart beats by itself. You breathe pretty much by itself. Your glands secrete their essences by themselves. You don't have voluntary control over these things. So we say it happens spontaneously. 
So when you go to sleep and you try to go to sleep, you interfere with the spontaneous process of going to sleep. Try to breathe, you know, real hard, and you find you get balled up in your breathing. So, uh, if you if you're going to be human, you just have to trust yourself to have bowel movements and go to sleep and digest your food. Uh, of course, if something goes seriously wrong and you need a surgeon, that's another matter. But by and large, uh, the healthy human being uh, doesn't, right from the start of life, need surgical interference. And he lets it happen by, by itself. So, so with the whole picture, that is fundamental to it. You've got to let go and let it happen. Because if you don't, you're going to be all clutched up. You're going to be constantly trying to do what can happen healthily only if you don't try.